Hello, fellow high-speed fanatics. Uh, this is episode 5, which we chose to be viewer requests. So we took all of your requests, and we picked five of them. And so what was our number one requested clip that we do? An epic slap in the face. An epic slap in the face. I had a feeling this was going to come up. A lot of people want to see you get slapped in the face. In me motion. specifically. I don't, you guys hate me or something. I don't know, but yeah. Uh, so... Since this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, I'm actually going to set up several cameras uh, that I have, and they each have high-speed capabilities. Maybe not as much as my uh, Phantom camera, but I'll still do it, just to make it last. Okay, here's the face slap at 2,500 frames per second. I'm going to get all the cameras ready, and then we'll go. I hope you're happy. Go. Ow. <laughs> and go. Ow! <laughs> that really hurt. Oh. I bet you're excited to review this shot, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, your number one requested shot, the face lap. Um, we decided to pick a frame rate that was not too slow or too fast, right around the middle. So I picked 2,500 frames per second. Here it is. I didn't expect it to hurt too much, except I forgot it was freezing cold outside. So my cheek was incredibly, like, stingy afterwards. Talk about it, Grace. What do you think about it? I enjoyed slapping you. Why? <laughs> I don't know. This is why you don't disrespect your girlfriend. You get slapped. Although it's, it looks like you've broken my nose. It basically turns into a C. It's a she C shape right there. Although, my nose didn't really hurt afterwards, so you must have not contacted the bone. It must have just been all that cartilage there. So there you guys go. I hope you're happy. Okay, so what was our uh, second clip that we chose to do? CD snap. A CD snap. Actually, we have some right here. Um, yeah, CDs are normally pretty rigid, but what we're going to do is bend it until it snaps. <laughs> and catch some high-speed footage of that. Um, I, I'm, we'll probably have to crank up the, the frame rate on that one, because that probably happens pretty quick. Okay, so we've got our CD here. Grace is gonna snap it. Um, we're gonna do a few different frame rates depending on how quickly this thing shatters. But first we're gonna run 2,500 frames per second. And whenever you're ready, go. Wow. Did it hurt you? That really hurt. Just because it's cold? Just because my fingers are numb. Um, snapping a CD. Um, I've, I've, I've done this before, and I know it looks pretty interesting. Um, so I was kind of glad that uh, whoever suggested it suggested it. But yeah, we started out with a baseline of 2,500 frames per second. And it becomes very apparent that this is obviously happening way too fast to catch at 2,500 frames per second. We actually get two very distinct frames of cracking. We get one frame, half of it's cracked. Another frame, the whole thing's cracked. So we're talking about just over one twelve hundredth of a second. But obviously it might be more, might be less, because we only have two frames to work with, that's not much data. So I cranked it up four times more to 10,000 frames per second. Um, 
we actually get uh, quite a bit more frames of the CD actually cracking. Uh, since this is four times slower, you'd expect to get about uh, eight frames of cracking. But we crank it up, and we see that it's actually one, two, three, between three and four frames at 10,000 frames per second. So now that's quite a bit of a difference. But you can see the fracture point starts right where that little black thing appears. It's like a little smudge, and then it turns into this giant crack, and it just travels across the length of the CD. So now I have all these shards that have a ton of potential energy stored into it, which is also like, it's sort of like spring energy. And it just all gets released and everything just turns into kinetic energy and just flies around. And it's funny to watch these uh, larger shards because they had so much energy stored in them that they're still vibrating in the air. Uh, this was about the slowest speed I could record fastest frame rate I could do uh, in the lighting we had because the the sun wasn't actually out um, so as you can see this is getting pretty dark so we couldn't go much past this um, so 25,000 frames per second so now we actually have like a period of time where without doing it frame by frame you can actually see the crack traveling over maybe like a quarter to half a second long And this happens in about 9 or 10 frames. So now that we have a lot more frames per second, we get a more accurate um, calculation of how long this takes. Okay, so what's the third thing we're going to do? We're going to open a shaken soda. A shaken soda. Uh, I think uh, what this came from was uh, in the Coke and Mentos video. In the credits, you saw me uh, open up, like, the, I think it was a Pepsi or something. I opened up a soda at Grace, so the credits, and it was, like, spraying everywhere. And so, I guess some people wanted to see that more close up, maybe slower, something like that. So we're going to do that one. All right, we've got Pepsi here. Uh, we're going to shake it vigorously, set it back down, and then open it. You ready? All right, and press. So, Pepsi was the only canned soda that we had readily available at the time. But yeah, we wanted to see uh, what the soda looks like as it comes out with all this release of pressure. So we did 2500 frames per second again for our baseline. Yeah, the shot was sort of scary because if you look at this giant clump of soda coming out what did it do grace it landed on the laptop yes it landed all over the keyboard uh, luckily nothing actually happened the keyboard is perfectly fine uh, but it's, it's weird to see that this entire opening of the can takes place over such a long time because in the real-time shot you can see I just went, it was open, and it seems like it would happen almost instantly. But there's like quite a few seconds where this is just, it's just releasing all this gas, and a little bit of foam sort of spewing out, making its way out of the crack that I've just made. But then once I, once the entire tab is open, then the CO2 can push out more soda at a time. And the reason why shaking a soda causes all of this pressure inside is not because of Mentos, um, but it's because normally, uh, CO2 is in a gas form, like when you breathe it out, um, just naturally in the air, CO2 is a gas. Um, so to get it into a soda, you have to pressurize it, and that turns it into sort of a liquid that you can then mix and dissolve into the soda. And since soda has a high surface tension, it's difficult for all these CO2 bubbles to find each other, and to like group up, form another bubble, get big enough to where it can actually like be released. And that's why leaving a soda out will naturally go flat over a long period of time. But shaking it sort of speeds it up, because now 
all of these uh, soda molecules are moving around so quickly, the surface tension just isn't there. And so the bubbles can find each other easier, in fact so easily, that it can cause sort of an explosion like this. Uh, what's number four? Bottle cavitation. Bottle cavitate. That's an interesting one. I'm going to grab a bottle. Um, basically what that is, is we take a glass bottle and we fill it with water. And what you do is, is sort of like a, a bar trick. Um, you hold it firmly with one hand and you smack the top of it extremely hard and it causes a cavitation in the bottom. Um, but otherwise, I'll explain it after it happens when we look at the footage. But yeah, that should be a cool one. Okay, so we have a bottle here with some blue colored water. We've got a bucket underneath it to uh, catch any water or shards glass. I've got a mallet here that I'm going to strike it with. And then the high-speed camera right there is going to capture what's going to happen. And three, two, one. And that's how it's done. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what happens. Oh, the, the pickle switch is frozen. Wow. This is how cold it is out here, people. My pickle switch has grown ice. Yes. So you better appreciate what we're doing for you guys. I'm freezing over here. <laughs> Alright. Three, two, one. Oh, my whole forehead got wet. Did it? Yes. Show my glasses. Yep. Wait, can't see it. Yep. Looks like you're crying. <laughs> it's probably gonna grow ice now. Probably. This one broke kind of similar, it's didn't so it? So cracked. It cracked all the way up here. Did it? Yeah. Oh wow. That's cool. I could have gotten hurt. You could have gotten hurt, Grace. Yeah. This is the second episode where you've almost gotten hurt. I know. First one, I got hit in the face. The rocket. Yeah. The soda rocket. Okay, so this is a very good science demonstration. It basically teaches you about partial vacuums. Well, first, let's just take a look. 2,500 frames per second. Now, the first time you watch this, there's a lot going on. You're probably just like, what just happened? Um, but the explanation is quite simple. It can't be soda because, as you saw with the last clip, if you even agitate soda, it'll just explode with foam. Same with beer. You said it was a bar trick, but... Oh yeah, anything carbonated, for that matter. What happens is, you hit the bottle as hard as you can, and since glass is a solid, it's going to... the force from you hitting it is going to travel down it at the speed of sound. Basically, instantly. Now water, since it has inertia, is going to sort of stay in the air while the uh, glass is separated from it because the glass is going to move down faster. So that's why you see the glass move down, but the water sort of stays up there at about the same height. And what looks like bubbles is actually what's known as a cavitation bubble. It's basically a vacuum, a partial vacuum. And since nature really does not like vacuums, it's going to want to fill that vacuum as quickly as it can with whatever it can. And since it has water, once the glass slows down, it's going to shove all this water back into the space. And it does it so quickly that it just shatters the bottle. Now ideally you would only break out the very bottom part, but this is a very strong glass bottle. What the heck? And since this is something that happened very quickly, I figured let's ramp up the high-speed camera. 10,000 frames per second. In this shot, you can actually see much larger, more distinct cavitation bubbles. Um, that might have something to do with how hard I hit it, or something like that. 
but you can see right at the moment of impact, all tons of bubbles are just there, cavitation bubbles. Not just in the bottom, but they're like almost all the way up the bottom as well. Once the bottle slows down, the water catches up and they all collapse almost at once. And all this force happening at once causes it to shatter right there. And what's the last thing we're gonna do? We're gonna smash the we're glass gonna bottle. We're gonna smash the bottle. So we're going to take another bottle and we're going to smash it. Just to see some glass fragmentation. All right, 2,500 frames per second, smashing a glass bottle. Just... So now we're going to do this at 10,000 frames per second. And instead of a mallet, a rubber mallet, I decided to use a hammer that had a curved surface. Do you know why, Grace? Why? A curved surface is going to contact a flat surface pretty much at a point. And when you want to smash something, like glass, you want a very high amount of pressure. And since the equation for pressure is force divided by area, we have the same amount of force, but since it's a smaller surface area contacting it, we get a lot more pressure. So we don't have to hit it nearly as hard to shatter it. You can actually see one frame where it actually just bends the bottle, like sort of compresses it. And you can actually see, once I hit it, the arm bar that it was resting on sort of gets pushed down and then it pushes back up. And you can see it fling all this glass up. And then the last shot we did, um, we were really running out of light with this, but I managed to get one more shot of 10,000 frames per second. I actually hit it so hard that this glass up here sort of like turned into a powder almost. I actually went through and hit the other edge too and smashed it. It smashed through the top layer and so we have this big chunk right here. And see this like top corner? Yep. Once I hit, I hit it down there, it actually snaps that off right there flings it at the hammer and then bounces off. Hmm. And that's something you would never ever ever see just by looking at it as it happens. And 10,000 frames per second reveals a lot going on. So yeah, no one tries this at home at all, but especially don't do it without a glove. I did that. And this, this shot right here, after I broke the bottle, it basically had broken all the way up almost to my thumb and it could have cut me. So that was almost bad. Don't be dumb like me. So I teach you these things. I do the dumb stuff. You learn. Okay, so thanks for sending in all your requests. We had some pretty good ones. Uh, we couldn't get to all of them, of course. Um, but I think what we're going to do is every fifth episode, so the fifth, tenth, fifteenth, we're going to do another of your requests. Uh, so the four episodes in between gives you time to send in requests for whatever you want. And uh, remember, we have um, our Twitter page, Facebook page, or email highspeedfanatics at gmail.com, or leave a comment on the YouTube video. We'll see you next week for our next episode, and send in more requests. Thanks for watching. Also, subscribe. <laughs>